Black Matter, where have they been when it comes down to Chicago and the 400 plus uh, black people have been killed there? Where are they now in Houston and in Florida? These people do nothing but divide. They're angry, they're racist, uh, they're anti American, and they want to flip our country to what uh, we, we as Americans do not want to have. And that's, that's what the elections of this last November was all about. We've seen our country drift in this direction for the last eight years of socialism, and, and we wonder how, did, how in the world could this happen? With, with, there's no rule of law anymore. Mm-hmm. There's, 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 there's bullying, uh, there's intimidation. Well, we decided that's not going to happen anymore. And, and I tell you, we're going to stand up. And America's not going to allow these, uh, these bullies to, to, uh, to get their way. We just have to have the courage. And like I said, there's one thing. Courage for white Americans not to apologize anymore. We have mm-hmm. nothing to apologize for. We have a great history we've, we've come together with. And it's time for black Americans to learn our history and, and recognize we have nothing to be apologized to uh, because our great ancestors paid the price, got the respect they deserve, and, and became very proud Americans, contributors of our country. Former NFL player of Burgess Owen yesterday on the Chris Arp show here on FM News Talk 97.1. And um, I thought he did a great job. And I've heard him say something like that before in one of his interviews the other day. Great get, by the way. Thank getting you. him on the radio. You know what? He And he gave me a, another perspective on the NFL. The NFL is in a world of hurt. Because <laughs> seriously, and I'm not no pun intended. Okay, all right. No. But you have the people that are boycotting the NFL because of Colin Kaepernick that, that think he should be in the league. And then Burgess was saying that he's not watching the NFL this year because he's tired of all the political correctness and the F- NFL letting all this foolishness go on. Go on. So he's he's not watching it. They're and getting I, hit from both sides. Exactly. And I had somebody uh, uh, on my Twitter page uh, commented on that and said, hit the NFL you know, in their pocketbooks. So they're getting squeezed on, on both sides. I think they felt it last year, yeah. but they apparently didn't feel it enough because yeah. – it's back this year with the yeah. vengeance. Um, you know, I, I mentioned before, I'm not watching the NFL much these days, but I am guessing that that isn't Burgess Owens in the Hall of Fame? Uh, no, but he has a Super Bowl ring. He does have a Super with Bowl the, ring. With okay, the Raiders. All right, all right. The Raiders. I was going to say that next, um, that next uh, reunion he goes to might be a little awkward for him, a little uh, awkward yeah. there. <laughs> you know, I asked him yesterday, does he like take his ring out sometimes and just look at it? What did he say? He said 30 years ago. <laughs> 30 years ago he did? <laughs> yeah, but he's like, I'm kind of over it now. Yeah, yeah. Well, you'd, you'd want it. Those things are so <laughs> obtrusive. They're I mean, those gaudy. guys have big hands to begin with, but those rings are huge. They're gaudy. Mm-hmm. Call it what it is. They're gaudy. Yeah, they're gaudy. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, I was thrilled that you got uh, Burgess Owens on. Yes, I mean, he, I, I've... Uh, you know, he's, he's a voice uh, in the wilderness right now because... Yeah. Uh, I mean, more people need to come forward and, and discuss that whole situation. There, there. I've got zero problem with you expressing your opinion on relations, race relations, whatever it is in this country. D- don't do it on my television screen when I'm tuning in to watch the sport that you're highly paid to participate in. What about? Don't people, need that. What about Mark? Here's the argument that, and I'm, I'm not saying I agree with it, but here's the argument that the people use. They were saying that. He's got that grand stage in front of, you know, on Sunday, in front of all those millions of fans, and that that's his stage to do that. I don't agree with that, but it's not as as big if he does it on his own time. He doesn't have that grand stage. You know what I'll bet you season tickets to the Rams over? (laughs) That not a single person who tunes in to Mm -hmm. watch the NFL on Sunday gives a hoot about what he has to say, but rather about how he's going to play. They don't care um, what these NFL players think, one way or the other. Yeah. The, the NBA players, baseball players, people are watching your game because of your sport, not your voice. Yeah. And I see the point that it's a that he's got a platform, but it's sort of a false platform because he wouldn't be standing on it <laughs> if he couldn't run a four four forty and exactly. and and or catch a ball or weigh five hundred pounds and tackle somebody. I mean, he if he didn't have that skill set, yeah. he wouldn't be there. I agree. I agree. You know, it was really interesting too when I was watching the Raiders game yesterday, and it, it kind of showed how the NFL is kind of really treading around this lightly so marshawn lynch sat down during the national anthem but the way that tony romo and jim nance said well he was sitting they showed him he was sitting on the bench adjusting his uh mouthpiece that's why he was sitting on the bench they didn't say it was a protest 
but he was adjusting his mouthpiece, and that's why he was on the bench during the national anthem. That's how they kind of danced around it. And I'm like, just say what it is. He's Th- protesting. Thank you. Thank Don't you. Don't say he's adjusting his mouthpiece, and that's why he's on the bench during the national anthem. Come on. I saw I saw the greatest uh, meme the other day. It, it had um, it had uh, Howard Cosell on it. Did right. you see that one? No, with I didn't Howard, see that. Had had Howard Cosell and uh, Joe Namath. Right. And and uh, our Olympic, really dating us. Our Olympic champion, um, who's who's a girl now. What's his Bruce Jenner? Okay, <laughs> they were both in this. The, he was interviewing both of them. Right. But Br- Bruce Jenner was on one side. O.J. Simpson's on the other side. There's Howard Cosell in the middle. And the meme said, "I'm Howard Cosell here. I'm about to look into the future, and you're not gonna believe what I'm about to tell you." <laughs> You know you're dating us, though, because there's probably uh, yeah, a whole I, lot of people I, like Joe Namath, Howard no, Cosell, no, no, no. Everybody Don knows. Meredith. Who is that? Yeah, no, no, no. All People in my audience know. Who. Right, I know good. I know their ages. People in my audience know who they are. Good. Trust me. Okay. You bet. Let me, let me get to a couple of uh, phone calls here real quick. Uh, Drew's been holding on the longest. Drew, you're on the radio. Good afternoon, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, two quick thoughts. One is you would think with all of these threats that the defense would have a great argument for appeal on a conviction to make the argument that the judge was threatened into a guilty verdict. Um, That was my first thought. And to the caller earlier, I think, you know, when both sides want this, I don't think it's light of criticism. I think you have the Black Lives Matter uh, movement that would like to use this to stoke fires. And then you have the other people, uh, law enforcement, that say, if this does happen, it's going to validate the point. When you had Alderman Boyd on, I didn't hear him apologize to Darren, Darren Wilson for his life being ruined. Um, I think this is people are going to use this to go, look, one side's going to be violent anytime they don't get their way, and the other side's going to go, hey, look, hear the cops come being violent to us. Yeah, well, and and that's kind of the quandary we find ourselves in, Drew. I appreciate the point, and I, th- I think his point's a good one. If if there is a guilty verdict, um, that I mean, the defense could certainly claim that somehow public pressure affected the outcome of the trial. That's more difficult in a bench trial yeah. than if it was a jury trial. That's what I was right? going to say. I'm so, no lawyer, but you'd have to prove somehow that the judge was intimidated, and how would you... Yeah. How would you do that? Yeah, I, I, you know, and, and Tim, Tim Wilson. I'll say this about Judge Wilson: he's been around a long, long time. And and I had Chet Pleben on here last week, who's of course been a defense attorney in yeah. St. Louis for thirty years. Chet's a great guy, but Chet knows all of these judges. Yes. I mean, he's been in their courtrooms, and he talked very highly of of Judge Wilson from an ethical point of view. And and he's been a defense attorney, which means that he's been in trials with Judge Wilson where things didn't turn out the way he wanted. And he's probably been in trials with Judge Wilson where things did. Right. And he said he's a very fair uh, and unbiased individual who will look at the facts of the case and rule on the law. And that's all we're asking yeah. for. I don't know Stockley. I've read the same stuff you've read. I don't know if he's, I don't think he planted a gun, but I, I don't know if he's guilty of wrongdoing in this case or not. That's going to be up to the judge. The only thing I've said about it is if the, if this was a slam dunk case, he would have been charged in 2011 and he wasn't. So I think the evidence in this case is very circumstantial. And, and for that reason, I'm not convinced it's going to be a guilty verdict. We shall see. We we shall see. Let me get to, uh, <laughs> okay. Jim. Welcome into the radio. Hey, one thing, if you would get that uh, Reverend on your show, what I would like for you to ask him is: Isn't it a bit hypocritical for them to be all upset about this one case when they say nothing about the carnage that goes on in St. Louis almost on a daily basis? Um, and and I I would ask him that if I got him on here. I mean, I, I the thing I find, and Jim, thank you for the call. The thing I find with um, with a lot of these folks, and and I know there are some good works that are going on in St. Louis to try to stop this violence. But he does make a good point that the the the, the you don't see some of the outrage about the day to day crimes within the black community, some of them gang-related, some of them not in North St. Louis, that you see in some of these specific cases that involve police officers. But what they'll say is they'll say that they're not related. It's different because what you have with black-on-black crime is a cultural thing sure. between people. They're saying that uh, it's more dangerous when you have the institution of government that's 
quote unquote assassinating people or black lives don't matter as much. That's that's where they see the distinction. Well, this they is, may this see the government. distinction, but the numbers are dramatically sure, different. Sure. I mean, just if you just took Chicago alone, yeah. uh, the yeah. the numbers of deaths are dramatically yeah. different. So, all right, Chris Arps, thank you, my thank friend. Thank you, sir. Appreciate great, it. Great great job. Thanks for your thank filling you. in the last few thank days. Thank you for always allowing me to sit. I Absolutely. appreciate standing in front of the big chair. <laughs> well, thanks for thanks for being here yesterday. Thanks. We do while well, I was off on assignment on assignment at a golf course. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> 314-969-9797-866-455-9797. We're going to give away a couple of our pocket constitutions uh, because, of course, Constitution Day is coming up. We'll do that next hour. Plus, um, we're going to talk about uh, Title IX and sex assault at universities. We'll be right back. This hour of the Mark Cox Show brought to you by Naputi Wellness. NaputiWellnessCenter.com. Let me tell you about the uh, Retirement Advisory Group and why, you know, if you find yourself in a certain place in life, it may be time to go talk to them. Why do you need to do that? Well, if you are getting close to 60, do you know about that uh, financial red zone Thomas Helbig talks about all the time? Uh, that's like being inside the 20-yard line in the NFL, right? You're expected to be able to score, uh, but a lot of people aren't prepared for retirement. When retirement is as close as the 20-yard line is to the goal line, you need to have a good idea what you're going to do to carry the ball across the line. There's your sports analogy. See, um, Thomas specializes in that. He knows how to get you ready to roll over that 401k into things that are going to provide income for years. 314-993-9494. Again, 314-993-9494. He'll give you a no-cost, no-obligation financial review. Uh, call him or go to his website, uh, therefore, the Retirement Advisory Group at retirementkey.com. Tim Jones here for Universal Windows Direct. You know, the kids are back in school. We're flipping their calendar page, which means winter is right around the corner. You might need new windows. If they're moldy, ugly, fogged up, drafty, or worse, cold weather is not far away. Don't suffer through one more winter in a cold, drafty home. Call my guys at Universal Windows Direct. They're a great local company. Universal Windows Direct offers windows that are more efficient on the edge of the glass than other windows on the market. It's aerospace technology called Super Spacer. Their windows have a life expectancy five times that of other systems, so you get windows that perform better and last longer. Universal is making it easy for you. Your home can be cozy all winter because for every window you buy, you get the next window free. There's no limit. 0% financing for 36 months, plus this week, free installation. As always, get the Universal True Lifetime Warranty for as long as you own your home and for 30 years to the next homeowner. Schedule your free in-home estimate today. Call Universal Windows Direct, 314-878-0300. Go to UniversalWindowsStLouis.com. Like me, you'll be saying, I love my windows. Going to the dentist doesn't have to be such a pain. Hi, I'm General Dentist Pete Spolito with West County Dental. For over 13 years, my team and I have been building a strong foundation of trust within our community by treating all of our patients like family. Our ultimate goal is to help you achieve optimal dental and overall health using state-of-the-art equipment like laser and 3D imaging, modern techniques, and a high standard of care. 